talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, talking fishing. If it's facts about fishing that you want to know, then tune in, folks, cause this is the show. We'll show you all the right bait to use, so sit right back, you got nothing to lose. Doesn't really matter if it's trout or cop, flathead marlin or a gummy shark. Listen to the guys and you can't go wrong, they'll be talking about fishing till the cows come home. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And welcome everyone to Talking Fishing. Big show coming your way tonight. Special guest in the studio who we'll introduce any minute now. But what a beautiful day. What a great run of weather we've had and how many people have been out on the snapper. It's just been absolutely sensational. You'll see some of that in Catch of the Week very, very shortly. But lots of topics to discuss tonight. And Adam, um, we are in the thick of the best fishing season. It's great that everyone's back out free and we're into it. Yeah, well, this, well we, we call this time <clears> of year snapper season, but I think the whiting have been just about as good as the snapper. The big calamari have turned up in huge numbers, and it won't be long before we're talking about kingfish and tuna out the front of Port Phillip Bay, Dave. So oh. I think we're in for one of the best seasons we've seen. Don't don't get me excited, I'll yeah. tell you what. Uh, Trelly, now you, you've, uh, we had a break for the Melbourne Cup last week, yep. and you've been bush for about two weeks. No one can get hold of you. No, nah, no, nah, I've been away. Yeah, it's uh, snuck off into the, uh, into the bush and uh, shot myself a deer. Yep, a bit of free organic range uh, venison, which was always good fun. So, uh, yeah, we really haven't stopped doing what we normally do in the country. Yeah, there you go. Well, we are <laughs> one now, Charlie. Yeah. We are all one. So, and a very special guest in the studio tonight, someone who's wanted to come on the program for many years and, and uh, we just haven't been able to find the room for him, but we've found the room for him. Uh, a great <coughs> welcome to Dallas De Silva from the Victorian Fisheries Authority. Welcome, Dal. Thanks, Dave. Great to be here. Now, long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> <laughs> now, mate, you actually did make an appearance in our first season. Yes. Uh, I think we do, were doing a protest rally in Horsham for saving Tolondo, and you were out there. Now, from memory, were you the CEO of VR Fish then? I was working for VR Fish at that time, yes. Yeah. So, a bit of history. You worked for fisheries. Yes. You tell me if I'm wrong here. You worked for fisheries? Yeah, worked for fisheries uh, in Victoria for about 10 years. Yep. Uh, started off working in Queensland fisheries. You know, that was my first gig straight yep. out of uni. And uh, yeah, what a great place to work up there. Mm. Yeah. Looking after places like Fraser Island and the Taylor off the beach. Just, yep. um, yeah, and lucky to, to get a job back in Victoria where I'm originally from. <coughs> so, yeah. you know, really great to be able to work in an area that you know, I'm really passionate about and mm. yeah, enjoy. Now, just to describe your role, you're like the, uh, the vice captain, aren't you? To Travis. Yeah, pretty much whatever <laughs> Travis doesn't want to do is you what do. I'll, you know, yeah. So you get all the shit jobs. Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Policy, a bit of management, science, licensing, you know, um, even some of our comms and events. So yep. it's, yeah, it's great yeah. to have that variety in the role. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's never quiet. You go to work every day and there's something different to do, so yep. it's really great. And I think the one thing is you know every punter in Victoria, like whether they're good, bad or ugly, they all ring you, don't they? They do. I get a, yeah, get a few phone calls from Rick Fishers, but it's such a great part of the job. You know, there's yeah. so many characters mm. in the industry, yep. and uh, yeah, everyone just loves their fishing, and it's, yep. it's a great place to work. Now, just for the people at home, just to explain that our our lighting director actually said, "Can you wear a hat because you don't have much hair on top?" Is that right? That's right. They said there might be a bit of reflection. <laughs> yeah. So I just want to explain that you got the, the and your name's not Tim. No, it's Target yeah. One Million is what that stands for. You got the hat on, so flying the colours. <laughs> um, getting the hurry on, folks. Let's have a look at what's been caught by the people at home. It's time for Catch of the Week. Catch of the Week, brought to you by Shimano. Now. I reckon I can genuinely say this is the first time ever mm -hmm. in the world. In the world. That this fishing report will ever have been made because it's just impossible that it could have been made in the past. Yeah. That this fishing report um, for Catch of the Week, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> oh, I've got, I've got the coughs now. Yeah. <coughs> and I'm going to lose my voice. <laughs> have a look at this. <coughs> I've lost my voice. Brody <laughs> Meathers, Murray Cod <coughs> in Berwick Springs. Is <coughs> oh, they... nice fish, Brody. I'll Actually, tell you, what. you know, no, this is this is probably that's a nice. This, fish. Everything's worked out nicely here, Dal. When did yeah. they put cod in Berwick Springs, and why haven't I been told? Yeah, Look at, yeah that, that way went in about uh, it was about twelve to eighteen months ago. Yeah, part nice. of the stocking with Kakarook and yeah, you know, oh. the metropolitan oh. lakes. And uh, yeah, maybe it didn't get the publicity that it, that it yeah, some the of the first other one well, it has now. Did, mm. so. 
Well done. Yeah, that's, that's it. Now. Excellent. Beric Springs Murray Cod. <laughs> <coughs> there you Turn go. I mean, I, mean not, I went down to Casey Fields and helped them stock. There was cod. Yeah. I reckon there was silver perch from a little town somewhere down. Is there in Casey Fields as well? Yeah, oh, yellow belly, yeah. silver perch, and yeah, Murray yeah, Cod. Get, 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 get the swim baits out. <laughs> There's only about a dozen or so. Um, no, nice. I'm surprised. I'm actually surprised. Oh, through... no, hey, they they will be coming in their prime. Well, in this gonna, warm I'm actually weather. surprised we haven't Jeez. seen some caught with all the activity with the stonkers as well in there. So mm. yeah. that's good. By the way, I think Brody's got about five stonkers. Rob Harris, none. Just for the people <laughs> that know Rob Harris. Them. All right, let's keep going. Um, our, let's go into Port Phillip Bay, actually, because Port Phillip Bay really dominates. We're going to go round Port Phillip Bay. Look at this. Courtney Sergio, have a look at this. Uh, PB Calamari, out with Dad well Sasha. Well done, Port. Yep, well done. <coughs> That's out near Mud Island. Nice, good eating. All right, let's kick off the snapper, because it's been a remarkable week for snapper. Have a look at this off Seaford, 16 metres. Russell Smith with a six kilo snapper. Yeah, it's good fish. Yeah, nice, nice one, Russ. Fish. There's right. been some good fish. Let's have a look at the year classes too, the variety in year classes, because it just says we have got such a great uh, fishery in Melbourne. <coughs> Jackson Gauchy, is that how it's like? Gauchy, I think. Uh, he got his first oh, snapper, good. 18 metres off oh, Chelsea. Chelsea. Nice. Beautiful. Yep. Good photo too. Well done, yeah. Jackson. Yeah. The young ones have just been having a ball. Look at this, Luke Connolly, a four kilo snapper off Black Rock. Now, I reckon every fish here is about yeah. five. 5Ks round yeah. the bay. We're going round yeah. the bay here. Well done, Luke. Look at that. That's <coughs> a lovely photo. And snapper. Just nice and flat fish. in the background. Good work. That's nice. They're getting bigger as you go up the top end of the bay. Sam P has got a six kilo snapper off Port Melbourne. Have a look at that. Samuel. Good fish. Yeah, on your Sam. The young bloke's beat you, mm. but that's okay. It's been a team player, Charlie. <laughs> Don't worry about the young kids, Charlie. Yeah. The girls. Oh, Have well. a look at this. Natalie yeah. Faruga, Faruga or yeah. Faruja. That's what happens when you're taking uh, fishing. 9.4 <laughs> kilo snapper off Altona. Have a look at that. 9.4. Hey? Look at that. Have a look at that. Look at the hump on the head. Snapper, that that's one. a horse. Jeez. Look at the nose. Let's stick in the Whoops. nine kilo range for now, right? Because <laughs> I reckon that down. top end of the bay is just sensational this yeah. time of year. Michael Ellis, have a look at this. 9.1 kilo snapper off Williamstown. Yeah. Far out. <clears throat> nice. Big. Good fish, aren't they? Yeah. I reckon yeah. that Williamstown area might be a little bit warmer than the rest of the bay, Dal. It is. Now, yeah. You, yeah. you're from Williamstown. I yeah? am, yeah. Beautiful part of the world. You've been out mm. snapper fishing? I have this this uh, yeah last week with Colin Wilkinson with from Wilco. the Angling Club. Yeah, and yeah. just I, I just just to put, get the score right, how many snapper have you caught this season? I actually haven't caught any so far. All right, so, well, yeah. well, what we do for the people that are um, from the if we can the camera over here, for the, uh, <laughs> the people from, oh, this that. is a special from the Premier of Victoria, mate. He <laughs> sends us in little gifts to give government employees. So <laughs> if uh, we could just pass that round no, to right. Dallas, the donor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Right. Just, just to commemorate, uh, just to commemorate uh, <laughs> Dallas's much. score on, um, on Snapper so far this uh, year. Daniel's Donuts. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're not meant to much. advertise yeah. that sort of stuff. But yeah. we just thought we'd bring that in yeah. for you, Dale. Just to it's we knew you'd been big. out with Wilco. We know Wilco's a good fisherman. Yeah. Except when he's got the banana on the boat, mate. So, <laughs> oh, uh, all yeah, right, let's, a let's keep going. Uh, <laughs> Phil Jordan, have a look at this six and a half kilo Snapper Clifton Springs. Phil, nice. Phil, yeah. that's a crack. I yeah. know Phil. No, Phil? Yeah, I think no, he Phil. sent a bigger yeah. one in today, but too late, didn't let production right. time. No. So, it's not your next um, one. He was going to send it in three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I tell you what, Travis Dowling is going to be very jealous of this next one, and he yeah. will also... Oh. Uh, I, I know where he's secretly camping right now. So do you, Dow. <laughs> and uh, there's no tennis courts or caravan parks involved. It's way yeah. out of the bush. But he will be heading to this place yeah. next week because I reckon he can't catch fish, but... you. Everyone can catch a Trevally off the Queenscliff Jetty. Have a look at this. Lars Croft, a 45 centimetre silver Trevally oh, off yep. Queenscliff. How good yeah. is that? Mm. Nice when, they're run, when they're running, it's so much cliff. fun. They're the best fish to catch. Yeah, they're well, so underrated. They go like, hard sideways. Yeah, like yeah. pulling a bucket. And, yeah. and when they're on, mm. even people like Travis Dowling can catch them. <laughs> so Travis will be... When he says to you next week, yeah. Dale, when he's back from holidays, he'll say, oh, I've just got to go and visit the staff at yeah. Queenscliff. That's code for... I'm going out to catch Coastal. a trevally. The Trevs are on. Because yeah. he loves it, doesn't he? He does. And maybe I should give this to Trav for his cod fishing today. Yeah. Oh. You should. Not that he's targeting well, cod because it's uh, closed that's season. Right. He's actually targeting yeah. yellow belly. Exactly. Mm. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know why he's going fishing with body grubs, but for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there you go. Now, Dale, you were down at Queenscliff 
uh, during the week and you had a bit of a shot at the calamari? I was, yeah. It was great to get down there and you know, meet the staff <clears> that you know, haven't been able to catch up with for the best part of six months. So I mm. um, snuck out with Taylor Hunt in the Lonsdale Bite there and yeah, we got about eight or nine calamari. Yep. Uh, nice. Biggest was about a kilo and a half. Yeah, yeah, that's, nice. a good so, yeah, yeah nice. that's a real good squid. Yeah. And uh, yeah, great to be out there. You know, the water was amazing. Yeah. We saw dolphins. Yeah, it was just yeah. spectacular. Yeah. yeah, he's a character, Taylor. Yeah, great guy, great guy to work with. Fantastic. If you would like to send in a pic of your catch of the week, this is what you have to do. If you want to be like me and have your photo on TV, email your fishing pic to info at ifish.com.au. Go Go high! Yeah, I want to go fishing. Coming up next, fisheries news, and we talk Gippsland Lakes with Dallas De Silva from the VFA, next on Talking Fishing. Talking fishing. We know what you'd rather be doing. We know what you've really got in mind. We know you'd rather be out fishing. And today's the day you're gonna wet a line. Cause every day's a good day. Stop wishing. Every day's a chance to drift away. Drift away. Every day's a good day for fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Live from the studios of Channel 31 Melbourne, it's now time for some very fishy news. Plenty of news, boys, and Dallas to Silver from the Victorian Fisheries Authority is in the house, so we've got anything tricky, any news? Uh-huh. Try and stop Thro- him. Thrown over to Dallas, <laughs> I'll tell you that, so. On the COVID bar, by the way, tonight, he's uh, <laughs> over there. If we can have a... Dallas, can we switch to your camera for a sec? On the COVID yeah, bar. Yeah, yeah. With, with the donut. donut. With the donut. Like, and, like and a beer. Chasms, the chasms <laughs> of the C31 studio, it looks yeah, like. Exactly, it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, all right, let's kick it off. Uh, it, is, it is spawning season for Murray Cod, and, of course, that is yep. why... Uh, it's a closed season for Murray Cod, and there's been some fantastic, um, oh, how do you describe it, egg laying, I guess, uh, <laughs> up at Snobs Creek Hatchery. Let's have a look at the video of uh, how they lay the eggs. Bit of fancy stuff. So, Dean, have you got some eggs in there? Woohoo! Yeah, I've got some eggs in there. Yeah, I've got some eggs in there. Tens of thousands of baby cod in there. All right, so now we'll pull it up off onto the bank. Just going to gently remove the black top. And you can see the eggs there on the, on the mesh. Get it ready to take back to the hatchery where we'll put the eggs in incubators and monitor them over the next couple of weeks. I tell you what, a big shout out to Adele who now runs mm. the native fish side of things up at Snobs Creek. Um, you know, Steve Vidler was there for quite some time and he is the world it's expert in Murray Cod, yeah. But He's, ha- he's down there and he's handing over the reins and just, yep. you, you see that egg production and they make it look simple, but mm. they are producing, you know, in the end will yeah. probably be a million Murray Cod, yeah. Dal, you know, and, th- and that'll soon be, mm. you know, probably a year away or so from uh, being at Arcadia near Shepparton. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Yep. They do some mm. great work up there and, uh, yeah, coming into summer, there'll be mm. lots of little cod stock, so fantastic. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, amazing. Uh, all right, next one. Uh, Goulburn River stocking is the headline. And uh, the Goulburn River has been stocked with 10,000 brown trout yearlings this week, in addition to 150 more stonker rainbows. The Alexandra Bridge got 75 of these giants and Walnuts Reserve the other 75. The Yildon Pondage got into the action too with 120, 120 ex-brewed brown trout, averaging three and a half kilos from our Snobs Creek hatchery down the road. Across the western side of Melbourne near Balan, is it Balan? Pikes Creek Reservoir 
was stocked with 2,000 brown trout yearlings this week. The trout stocking season will draw to an end soon as the weather warms and will turn our attention to releasing bass, cod and yellows, amongst other things. How good's that? Oh, stocking good. program going well. I saved a few for the uh, COVID out <coughs> outbreak of Melbourne people, I yeah. see. Yeah, everyone's going through the ring of steel now because it's gone. Yeah, that's right. And uh, I reckon plenty of anglers up on the on the Goulburn this yeah. weekend. Yeah. So, and, and great work, VFA, Dal and mm. the team for, for getting those fish in the water in a timely manner. So, all right, not so good news. Um, I don't know if we've mentioned this before, but an email came out through Parks Victoria. Um, Parks Victoria has closed Fisherman's Jetty in Mornington Harbour uh, until further notice for public safety due to risk of structural failure. Recent assessments revealed significant concerns for the structural capacity of the jetty with several failed piles. This has resulted in its closure to all pedestrian traffic with berthing access restricted to only a few berths not affected by the structural failures. <coughs> Full physical closure will occur, occur from 4pm Wednesday 4th of November, which was last Wednesday. So they're putting security on there, are they? I think they just put up a bloody big fence, uh, to be honest. So, security so uh, through that email, rules. I went back to uh, Michael from Parks. I won't mention his surname, but my, this is on Friday the 30th of October. So what's that, um, 10 days ago? Yeah, mm -hmm. something like that. I said to Michael, um, what is the time frame to repair and reopen Fisherman's Jetty at Mornington Harbour? It would also be good to get an update on both Warneet Piers, Half Moon Bay Jetty, Brighton Pier, and the Werribee rock wall that has also been fenced off. We'd like to get an update now. Uh, he wrote back, I'll seek some advice on the time frame and plan for repair. Uh, similarly, I'll provide an update on the other piers and jetties. Thanks, Michael, but we're still waiting 10 days later. Now, I'm, you might have had the cup weekend off or whatever, maybe a bit of annual leave, but Michael, if you can get back to us before next week's episode, we'd really love to know why <coughs> Parks is shutting down all these piers and not fixing them. So love 10 to days know. off. Love to know why. Um, long, 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 long. Oh, update! <laughs> oh, oh, big, big news, boys! Oh. Big news. Um, yeah. This is a this is an update. This is an update when you can't give an update. This is Hastings Pier taken off the webcam today. Um, oh, the coffer dam fell in. Oh, sorry, uh, they took it out. It's gone. <laughs> I am told that they will make an announcement this Friday when the opening dates. They're going to announce on Friday right. when the opening date's going to be. So. Why can't Dallas do it right now? Is he? <laughs> it's not Dallas. Oh, sorry. It's, it's um, better boating Victoria that's okay. actually... They've oh. made no comment from you either, Dallas. So how come we have to wait until Friday? Corner. Are they still trying to decide on the opening date? Yeah. So Friday will actually make this project um, one, <coughs> one month late. Mm -hmm. So it was meant to be the 16th of October it was open. And if you... You know, if you were... Can a I have a look at the phone? Yeah, if you were a good planner, mm. ads and Charlie, right? If mm. you were a good planner... Mm. And you got told, I want you to plan the worst time <laughs> to have Hastings boat ramp closed. You know yep. when you'd pick? Let's just say they Snap, nailed it. Snap, they <laughs> nailed it. Yeah, yeah. They better boat yeah. in Victoria has nailed yeah. it. But I reckon it would have taken longer unless you didn't bring the issue up and pump and last, <laughs> last six weeks on it. You yeah, reckon it hasn't helped? <laughs> yeah. No, it's helped probably. You reckon it's helped? Probably, probably a month. You, could not, if you, you couldn't have planned it any worse. A month ahead of That if you were to pick the worst schedule. date. Yeah. To take Hastings boat ramp out and do mm. these things. Not fishermen, are they? They've got no idea, Charlie. And got I, no like, idea. To be honest, deer. <laughs> no idea. Hopefully, uh, you shot I, that deer. deer. I did um, like it. It's it is. <laughs> um, it's quite unbelievable to to think <clears throat> that a promise two years ago to make boating better resulted in closing the busiest boat ramp in Western Port, the busiest boat ramp in Western Port at the <clears throat> very prime time. Get to also take it. Don't mention date. Dallas. It's not his fault. <laughs> all right, let's let's move. Oh, uh, oh. all right. Number f the, the next fishery. This is an interesting one, Dallas. We're going to get you involved in this one. You're allowed to mention this one. Right, without getting in trouble. Um, this came out on social media today. While junior and senior fishers don't have to buy a fishing license. If you live and breathe fishing like we do, which is Dallas and Travis, uh, we understand you might still want to show your love and dedication of the pastime. That's why we're seeking your feedback on a proposal to create free fishing cards for junior fishers under 18 and senior fishers over 70, or holders of a senior card. Let's have a look at what the cards are gonna look like on the screen. Um, on January 1 every year, a new version of each card would be released with a different species. So both groups can build a collection, especially the kids. 
got to catch them all. All you have to do is register for a card online and it'll be sent straight to your home address. We'd automatically enter, enter you into competitions to win fishing equipment when you register. So over to you. Tell us what you think in the comments below. This is on Facebook. Or send your feedback to have your say at vfa.vic.gov.au. Now, Dal, I, I want to start the debate. On that card, it had an RFL number. So what I say is that if you're going to give it a unique RFL number, why don't you call it a license? A free license, why don't you? Oh, just because it, it's not a license, you know, it, it's a card, it's uh, it's not something you must have, whereas mm. you know, a license is something yep. you're required to hold by law. Uh, this is voluntary. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the feedback we've had, you've seen the comments. Oh, very positive. Yeah, great. Yeah, None yeah. of them agree with me. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> my, my, my little boy loves his Pokemon cards, yeah. and you know they collect Ushies from Coles. Yeah, and, you know, so yeah. it's a really it's Ushies a were from Woolworths, by the way. Oh, yeah. Woolies, there you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, you probably collected them from Coles. <laughs> yeah, I, I might have. Uh, but yeah, it's it's been really well received. It, it is out for comment still. Yeah, and um, yeah, so yeah. it's a concept. Yes, you want people's feedback. Okay, my next thing is, um, would you make the seniors one because we get a lot of feedback right that seniors some seniors may want to contribute to improving recreational fishing by financially contributing they don't need a license now i guess they could buy one mm. but could you put an option on this to say you know do you want to pay a full license fee or do you want to pay five bucks or something like that just to help cover the costs and contribute back into fishing it's open for comment dove so you know <laughs> there's there's every opportunity for, for yep. people to put their views forward but again mm. it's not a uh, it's not a license it's yeah. uh yeah, it's really it's a different sort of concept, but for the kids yeah. in particular, great way to lead into holding your first fishing license when you yeah. are required to, yeah. you know, when you're mm. 18. Yeah. So how many collectors are going to fake their date of birth to get one of these? Kids? <laughs> 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 Probably a few. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, let's move on. That's the rest. That's fisheries news done. So a couple of things we want to talk to you about, Dal. Um, the Gippsland Lakes. Now there's a recovery plan to to try and bring wreck fishing back to the mecca it was in the Gippsland Lakes. And one of the things, I guess, that kicked that all off was the commercial netters are now gone out of the Gippsland Lakes. Yeah. All gone. Uh, they all went in the first year. But there's still a very big commercial fishing presence down there at Gippsland, at, at Lakes Entrance, isn't there? There is, absolutely, yeah. There's a huge offshore fishery out of lakes in Bass Strait for whiting, for flathead, snapper, gummy shark. Um, there's a prawn fishery offshore as well. Mm. So there's a huge amount of seafood that's caught offshore that is still landed in lakes entrance. Uh, the actual lakes themselves accounted for about one or two percent of the total catch in East Gippsland. So, oh, so yeah, a yeah, really small amount. But so it hasn't really affected b being able to buy seafood in lakes entrance? Absolutely, yeah. There's still a huge yeah. amount of opportunities there. You know, a bunch of different species caught offshore. Yep. And uh, yeah, it's great to have that. Now yeah. you put out a survey about the Gippsland Lakes. Um, biggest response ever? It is. You know, in my time in fisheries, uh, nearly 20 years, I don't think we've ever had 4,000 responses mm. to a uh, to a recovery plan or a draft mm. plan or a policy. You know, it's yep. uh, it's been really great to see. And I just I think it shows how much interest there is in fishing in Gippsland. Yeah. Yep. And you know, the lakes itself. It's an amazing system of you know estuaries and yep. little bays and so on. So. Um, and Dave, you've been really heavily involved in the, the steering mm. committee for that. Yep. So yeah, you've you know, you've got a, a great understanding of what we're all trying to achieve there and what the plan's all about. Yeah, yeah. Now we, I think we've got the minister on the show next week, um, Melissa Horn, um, and she'll she, well maybe it might be on the agenda to talk about some of the survey results. But mm. it is with the minister's office to obviously to make some decisions on some yeah. of those results and so forth. So yeah. Yeah. we'll talk a little bit about that later on, but we need to go to a break. Coming up next, product of the week, and Cara takes us into the kitchen for a fish salad. Next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. Talking fishing, 
Okay, product of the week this week is a little bit of a shout out to the boys out there to get in early on your Christmas presents because I'm gonna run through a few little bits and pieces with spotters that you may have missed over previous years of the show, but also just with the so much information coming out these days, it's easy to miss little things that make, you, make a huge difference. So I wanna start with spotters brilliant range and it is a range now because <coughs> it has grown exponentially over the last few years of glasses for the ladies. Now, I would be lying if I haven't seen a few men buy these for themselves in the shop over the years, but that's a story for another day. That um, later on. Spotters have a very comprehensive range of different styles aimed at female uh, participants in the sport or just everyday use. Um, your choices in lenses are a little bit more limited, but you'd be pleased to know that the two most popular lenses in the range are available in pretty much all of the frames uh, for the ladies. I've got a, one of the newer pairs here and uh, listen. Can Trelly model them? Yeah, of course oh, you can. Trelly should model the ladies. Um, so these are the spotters the Bella. Are. I go up my kayak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess where they've really nailed the design in the ladies' lenses, something you can wear fishing that is practical and does the job for you, but also you can wear down the street or drive in, all that sort of stuff. Charlie, you just what? wear them to the drive getting in. Getting it done. The drive in. Mm. Straight out of a spotless catalogue. Yeah, right. Mm. Um, <laughs> so that's the, so, boys. Get, get it, why wouldn't you get your wife get a, a pair of spotters for Christmas? Yeah. And it, shopping's done for the year. Well, because, oh, mm. I forgot this. The other thing, <laughs> they they used to just make the ladies' pairs in the resin lenses. Yeah. They mm. now make them in the premium glass, scratch resistant, is cl the, the clearest pair of sunnies you'll ever look through in your life. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so available in all those. Uh, pop down to your local and have a look because there is quite a few different models mm. now and uh, you will find something that will fit and also Is that because used to scratch the other ones, do they? No. Oh, the, um, the resin the ones scratch a little bit, yeah, little the bit resin easier. Ones would. Um, these, are an, these are an interesting one. We, I must admit, I, I these. don't understand yeah. these fully, but... I love them. These are yeah, the yali. extreme lens. Now, I always thought they were a bit of a fly fisherman thing because they seem to love the yellow lenses. Well, well yeah, they, they yeah. are because... If you want to fish in very dull early morning or very late at night, you know, mm. late in the evening, almost after sundown, and still spot the fish, these glasses. So why is that a fly you, fisherman thing? Because, because, because I, do that, you, I do that with lures. <coughs> yeah, but you, uh, yeah, but you fly fish, yeah, you know, on the evening rise, the rise of the yeah. insects and all that. Yeah. So dull light and and putting these on actually lights up everything. Well, mm. I guess that's where the name extreme for the lens comes mm. from because mm. after putting them on or, or while you're wearing them. The difference it makes is mm. extreme. It it literally yeah. brightens to the point where if you were to wear them in full sun during the day, it'd almost be unbearable. Too, too bright. <laughs> so yeah. they go with your cane creel on your pipe. Yeah, and they're good for driving apparently. Yeah, that's, right. And look at that, they even come in the old flies <laughs> eyes style. Look at that's that. right. Yeah. <laughs> so they're a cracker extreme. And mm. uh, <clears throat> this is probably one of the newer things that Spotters has done. The old stone lens, which was a grey base mm. lens is now a full transition photochromic lens. Good, so I like the break. that does change tint with the intensity mm, yeah. of the light. It's also activated by right? heat. Yep. Uh, so it's yeah, For basically a three a, a three a three way activation system on the photochromic lenses, which no one else can do, is now available in the straight grey lens, <coughs> which will be very, very good news to everyone who likes to wear them driving, but also does a lot of stuff out on the bay in the blue water. Yep. That would have to be their number one selling. So if you're looking at the sun and lick windows, you can wear these. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I like that. That's the grit. Grit. No, yeah. So that's um. Yeah, quite a stylish little arrangement. It's mm. got a little bit of a wrap around there to, mm. for the mm. fishers, so I don't mind it. No, but no. Very good. yeah, jump into your local and have a look at the uh, the spotters. There's a few bits and pieces that you've probably missed. Yeah, yeah I've really, really, really underdone it because I <coughs> do have a great range of different frames which suit a lot, a lot of people. Oh, there's very, very good. Now. Yeah, excellent. Yep. All right, as always, after the product of the week, we are joined by Cara in the kitchen. Have a look at this for summer, a beautiful uh, fish salad. Have a look at this. warming up, salads are a really great dish to put together. They're quick, they're easy, you don't need too many ingredients. A personal favourite is a chilli and lime barramundi salad. You can get this dish on the table in 15 to 20 minutes. I'm using Australian barramundi for this. To prepare our fish, we're going to cut away the bones, 
and we want to cut it into sort of nice big chunks so that we really get that full flavour when we bite into our salad. We want to give our barramundi a really good coating of corn flour and a little bit of salt for seasoning. We will toss those through and make sure that they're well covered and these are going to crisp up beautifully in the oil. Okay, these are looking really good and we can head off and shallow fry these. Nice hot pan in with our fish and we'll give it about two or three minutes each side because they're not too big so they won't take too long. To put our salad together, we're going to start with these lovely fresh crisp bean shoots. They can go in straight as they are. The coriander, we will roughly chop that and add that in. And then we're going to finely slice the remaining ingredients. So it's a red onion. So we just want to cut these really finely. Bell peppers or capsicum if you can't find those. And a couple of red cayenne chilies. Just so that the flavours all balance and complement each other. And you're not biting into anything that's too chunky. The dressing. Three generous tablespoons of rice wine vinegar, a tablespoon of brown sugar, and the juice of two limes. We'll mix those all together and then coat that over our salad. And then we can toss our fish through at the end. So when we whisk this through, just make sure that all the sugar granules have dissolved in the vinegar. Beautiful, punchy, zesty dressing. In with the barramundi and gently toss that through. This salad looks really impressive, particularly plated on a platter. You can either do these on individual platters or a long one down the table for guests to share. And I'm just going to finish off the garnish with a little bit of charred lime. And there we go. A delicious chili and lime barramundi. Hopefully you enjoy the punchy flavours in this dish. Wow. Didn't want that one. That looked all right. That yep. is good for summer. Now, yep. can I, I just, people wouldn't know this. And Dallas, don't get too scared. They haven't got any video footage right. But uh, you are, you have your own, you do your own <laughs> cooking segments to a private audience. Like uh -huh. there's a bit of a group that, um, and you're quite a connoisseur. I've seen some of the stuff you cook. What is the difference between bell peppers and capsicum? Do you know? I don't know, mate. I think bell peppers is actually a, an American term. Yeah. And I think capsicum is more of an Italian word. Yeah, ah. just checking your knowledge of vegetables. All right. no, but no I do worries. like to cook, and, and I <coughs> notice you have done a few good dishes as well this done year, a few. <laughs> Travis would know. Yeah. Travis, Travis would know. He's, he also cooks a bit. Uh, Coming up next, Kramer's Mailbag, and plenty more to discuss with Dallas De Silva from Fisheries, next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. G'day, Callan here from Paul Worsland's Tackle World Kramer. Supercharged batteries have been supplying maintenance-free marine batteries since 2001. The Seamaster Gold Range is second to none, delivering superior starting power and reserve capacity. No need to top up with water, truly a fit and forget battery. With up to two years replacement warranty, you know you have quality. Your battery is your lifeline. Without it, you're dead in the water because it's bloody hard to push start. I've got a Seamaster battery in my boat. Make yours a Seamaster Gold today. All righty, a uh, bit of mailbag this week, boys. So let's get stuck into it. This sign has appeared. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where, but I think it's at Upper Colliburn Reservoir. Sent, let's have a look at the sign. Sent in by Carmelo. Nothing but trouble up there. Uh, this is stupid, writes Carmelo. When the lake is full, they close it. Collab and water have no idea how to run this place. Uh, I guess that's up a Collab and... Uh, 
Dal, we'll send that through to Fisheries tomorrow, I think, this photo to uh, ask what the hell's going on. I mean, the Premier sat here and said mm. they'll open up Upper Colobin Water, yep. mm -hmm. Upper Colobin Reservoir, to non-powered watercraft, including mm. boats with electric motors. So and we don't know why it's shut? Well, Carmelo, Carmelo reckons that it's because the water level's full. They've closed it. Isn't, Isn't that the best time? Isn't that the best time, time yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, we've got no water to open yeah. uh, I don't know. <laughs> Wasn't the there a rock that, in the way? <clears throat> no, they moved the rock. They built a boat ramp. It looks like the boat ramp's out of right. water. We fixed that in Shepparton. We elected a black fellow on the council <laughs> so we can get all that stuff done now. Oh, dear. I endorsed all his right. campaign. All right. Did he get on? Yep. He did. Beauty. Greg James. Go on, you, Greg. All right. Uh, <laughs> Jeez, that escalated quickly. Yeah. Uh, all right, next one. Uh, hi, David and team. I thought I, I thought I heard you say on a recent episode of the Lake uh, uh, that the Lake Tyres Estuary Bar was about to open. Is this true? Well, if you get onto laketyrescaravanpark.com.au, they have a link to webcam, and we've got a, uh, a picture here. This is from the webcam this morning. Look at that narrow strip of sand between the estuary oh, and the yeah. ocean there. Mm. I don't think it's going to open. No, I mean, oh. it's, I mean, it's Dal, you know the place as well as any. Um, it's, there's not a lot of rain forecast. Mm. It's touch and go though, isn't yeah. it? It's, not... it's going to take another 20, oh, and it's going to take another 200 mil yeah. of rain to open that, and that's not going to yeah. happen. Yeah. Because that bar has been built up for a long, yeah. long time. Yeah, that yeah. ain't coming open in a and hurry. It's, and it's been that close for like yeah. weeks now. So. Yeah. Don't they blow them? They get in there and just Not blow anymore. Them? No. Oh, no. Only if you need to, if the water yeah. level's yeah. over major roads and stuff like that. But it's oh, not, yeah. I don't think so. But with, that, but, but with the amount of water that Lake mm. Tyres has received over the winter, it doesn't need to open. No. And this and is this is the big thing. It's not crucial fresh, that it opens anymore. And there'll be a fresh dump of salt yep. over there. Yeah, it, all those on a, prawns yeah. that Dallas yep. put in mm. yep. we'll will all be big, except year. the ones that are in the yard, dusky flayed's guts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That place will be alive this summer. Oh yeah. Absolutely Imagine the alive. size of the tailor in there now. Oh, I'd be insane. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's better to keep it closed. Dots. Yep. From a from a yeah in terms of keeping the fish in there that yep. are there now. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, if you'd like to book uh, a holiday down at Lake Tyres at Christmas, try about 2024. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's keep going here. This one's from Andy. Hi, David. Can you shed some light on what is happening with parking at the Paddo River boat ramp? i tell you what. Oh, Since the COVID restrictions have been lifted, there are now traffic management personnel in attendance. These people are now telling boaties mm. they can't launch their boats as the car park is full. In fact, they are turning boats away, telling drivers to go to Morty Alec or Frankston. We covered that two weeks ago. Mm. I don't believe this is lawful. If someone wants to launch a boat, surely they should be allowed to. It is up to them to find a place to park their car and trailer. Or you could have a mate yeah. there, launch your boat and go and take the car and trailer home. So right. I don't think they do have a right to turn people around. Uh, the second point went down on Saturday morning. Now, this is interesting because my son did the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, around 9.30, the traffic management, again, attendance, was in my car and not fishing. I drove round the attendant and got to the parking area, maybe 12 trailers in the car park because it was windy. Yep. Uh, temporary orange bollards lined all along the car parking area with signs which informed drivers of cars they were not allowed to park there as it was for cars and trailers only. My son sent me a text at about 9.30 as well. He got stopped at the gate and told no single cars over there. And he said, mate, I'm just going for a drive and a look. Uh, and it's windy day, so there's no one launching. 12 people launched yeah, on right. Saturday. Mm. And they were stopping cars going over there because mm. they thought the car park was going. There's some real, I can just, there, there are mm. some real issues it down there. It's 20 minutes longer to get a taxi. Yep. But the, the there's worry, real issues down there. The worrying thing though, Dave, is all the issues could be sorted with a little bit of common sense. That's probably the most alarming thing out of the well, no one's, this whole thing. Uh, you know, it comes down to no one's trained the new traffic management group that's running it. But so what, in all honesty, what training do you need? If there's car parks, let people go in yeah, there. But, if it's yeah, full, but, open the overflow. But the next day, they have to stop single cars going in because every trailer park is needed. So it's a day-to-day -day basis, and all yeah. they have to do is look at Seabreeze or something like that. Well, this yeah, day-to-day day -day basis, yeah, it's just, still, it's a pretty yeah, easy... but a lot of people... Tower, is that? Charlie, a lot of people land-based fish at Paddo yeah. River, right? There is nothing wrong with them parking in trailer parks. There's 200 yeah. car parks, you know, so when, when it's a windy day and you've only got 12 launches, yeah. that means you've got 200 <coughs> empty car parks. So People can <coughs> park in them if they want to go brim fishing. Well, yeah, I, I, was, I was there a couple of weeks ago, and correct me if I'm wrong, all the car parks that line the actual... actual I guess the main river, hmm. were they not single car parks? So the ones uh, closest to the water, end. because there's cars with trailers that have obviously been directed to park there, the nose of the car is basically at 
the wall, like yep. any further over, you're in mm. the water, yep. so that the trailer fits in the car park. So the cars are basically parked up on the... No, nah, there's a strip of land between the wall and the... Like, like there's a bit of land like where we have mates staying yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, but the cars, the, the car parks seem to only be mapped out for a single car, yet they're directing the trailers to park so that the car yeah. way overshoots the car park or so the trailer. Yeah. And the trailer, yeah. Totally but but it was um, made for single cars. <clears throat> it's, it's a mess. It doesn't make any and sense And it needs to me. sorting. It really needs <laughs> sorting. Uh, all right, this one here, you guys might be able to help out Dal and Trelly, I reckon. Thanks heaps. Uh, this is from Ivan. Thanks heaps for the regular fishing reports. I also love watching Talking Fishing with Kramer, Adam and Trelly. I really enjoy bait fishing for cod and yellow belly from the bank. Boy. A boat is coming for my 50th in a few years. And annually, my young family and or I go to my special Murray River spot. I have text some photos with my daughters and a nice cod to Adam before. Adam? I fish very late into the night and there is nothing better for the soul than a silent night on the river with the full moon out waiting for the rod to buckle. Anyway, I've been to Lake Eildon twice. Both times have been a terrible experience. It was almost impossible to find any accessible, decent spots to fish from the bank and I spent all day trying to find one. He needs that donut, I reckon. Um, could you please give me some directions to just one decent spot where I could set myself up for the day and night, possibly set up a tent, or even crash in my car and maybe catch a coddle yellow belly. You go first, Dolls. I'll hand that over to you, Trelly, mate. That's your no. <laughs> neck of the woods. Well, if, you, if you're going up to Lake, Eildon, Lake, Eildon. Lake Eildon, if you go around to the Mansfield side, I know it's a bit of a travel if you get, mm. you're looking at the Eildon side, go around the Mansfield side, go in towards Hauqua, turn in the Dallatite Arm, and it's got the pines, right? Now, the pines runs for absolutely miles. Mm. Of that, the, the sort of like the inner part of, of Lake Eildon, yeah. and you can go along there and, and park and fish and camp, you know, up above the water level line. So you're in the Delatite Arm. Yeah, you're in the Delatite Arm, but on the pines, what we call the pines. Yeah. So you know, it's like the like Eildon's like a horseshoe shape. Yeah, yeah. The middle bit. Yep. You got Goffs Bay there. You got the Delatite Arm in there. Yep. But there's miles of, of access in there. Yeah. I know it's a little bit of a hike around that side. There's a few spots around this side. Hutchies Lane. Near Bonnie Doon, you cross the big long bridge, you know, the wars on you get the pub yep. on the other side, turn up the right, Hutchie's Lane, turn the corner. Okay. So the pines. Yep, the Every pines, best spot. Nice. Yeah. All right. Um, if you'd like to write into Kramer's Mailbag, this is what you need to do. Send your mail to Kramer's Mailbag, PO Box 734, Patterson Lakes, Victoria 3197, or email kramer at ifish.com.au. All right, now coming up, the only snapper fishing comp that I know of in um, or both bays, the Peninsula Snapper Challenge is coming up. All the details on your screen coming up now. No, that's not it. And I need it because I haven't got any notes with me. Um, <laughs> the Peninsula Snapper Challenge, the Here boys are go. putting it all together. There you go. <laughs> the 21st to the 29th of November, nine days of competition fishing, open junior and kayak divisions. Uh, Trelly, you've been in the open. Uh, not definitely not the kayak or junior. Ah. It's a COVID nineteen safe event. Facebook prize draw broadcast every competition day. Over fifty lucky draw prizes. Uh, it's a great comp. Yeah, good uh, job. Tickets are now open. You can now buy them. Peninsula Snapper Challenge dot com is where you get your tickets. Get amongst Sponsor it. Boys. Yeah. Support the boys. Spotters too. Huge Another effort. Sponsor. Huge yeah, yeah. effort just to make that happen. Smart. Yeah. Um, we've got a whole lot of stuff to talk to you about, Dale, but they're yelling at us to go to a break. Going to go to a break. We've got lots to talk to you about. Uh, coming up next, the all important hotspots, and we'll talk to Dallas some more next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. The Bo Morris Motor Yacht Squadron is a trailer boat and social club on Port Phillip Bay. The club has a great range of facilities, including multiple boat ramps, ample car and trailer parking, boat wash and fish cleaning fishing competitions and boat safety lectures, boating activities and club events, a restaurant and two bars. Easy launch and retrieval makes for a relaxing time on the water for you, your family and friends to enjoy. And boating memberships are now available. The Bo Morris Motor Yacht Squadron, the best trailer boat experience on the bay. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And now the segment you've all been waiting for, Fishing Hotspots. Brought to you by the Bo Morris Motor Yacht Squadron, Melbourne's premier trailer boat club. So many things to talk to Dallas about. We'll get through hotspots really quickly. Let's kick it off. Uh, number one, if you want some big calamari, there's still plenty around. I know it's snapper season. Just sneak away, get yourself some big calamari. Queenscliff is the spot for some big calamari at the moment. Um, just 
Use just the spots. Go there. Yeah. Just go there. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, for the snapper, Edith Vale, 17 metres this Ooh. weekend, will be on fire. Absolutely oh, on fire. You'll see the reefs, you'll sound them up. Um, just a great place to be this weekend. Let's head over to Western Port now and uh, Lysarts. I know you can't launch at Hastings because um, during the very best time of year, they've closed Hastings boat ramp. But you can launch at Warner, you can launch at Stony Point, and get down to Lysarts because uh, it's it's been underfished basically. Yeah, that's and that's when you know snapper season's really on yeah. when fish are schooled up out for the Lysarts. Yeah, yep. yep. so there you go. Uh, if you want to feed a King George Whiting, as Adam was saying earlier on, great King George Whiting during snapper season. Head down to Tortoise Head in Western Port. That's the next hot spot. Uh, some fantastic King George Whiting up to forty three centimeters down there. Now. For inland, you're allowed to go. Melbourne, yeah, get you're free. <laughs> Head up to Lake. Now is the time to grab yourself a dozen yabbies from your local bait and tackle shop. Head up to Lake Eildon for Yellow Belly off the bank as old mate. You just put him on the, the spot. The pines. pines. A lot of people yep. go around Bonnie Doon too. Yeah. Yeah, a lot yeah. of people target them in boats. But yep. uh, get up to Lake Eildon, the Yellow Belly. November is the month for Yellow Belly. And yep. if you want to help out a community that's been affected by bushfires, been affected by COVID. Mm. It's the doors are open been from Melbourne. By 2020 Get down general. to Lakes Entrance. <laughs> Gippy Lakes are on fire. Dal and we're about to talk about the brim spawning down there, but brim and flathead everywhere in Lakes Entrance. Fantastic. Go and see Frank Melito. Yeah, so say so go um, to Frank Forrest. But on the back road now, he's got his own bait and tackle shop. He he's does. moved from the Caltex and yeah. uh, go, mm. go and see Frank down there. Tell him we sent, yeah, and he'll put you onto some brim and some flathead in the Gippy Lakes. So, all right, now. Um, Dal, last week we touched on it. We've got a bit of a graph to show now. I think we'll put that up straight away. Um, this is the spawning results, or I guess the abundance of very small brim in the Gippsand Lakes. You do the same as the snapper trawl and the whiting trawl in Port Phillip Bay. Tell us a little bit about this. Yeah, exactly. We survey 50 sites across the lakes every year, and uh, we repeat that so we've, you know, we can compare year to year. And um, yeah, you can see uh, this year we had a, a relatively high spike or count of uh, one year old fish. Second best in 10 years. Second best, yeah. In mm. 2017 we had the best. So the next few years those fish are going to come through, yeah. reach uh, you know, above the minimum size limit and it's going to be really great to see. So there's going to be some good brim fishing isn't there? Mm. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, that's done by the guys down at Queenscliff, Simon Conran and uh, yeah, you know, fantastic bit of science there to help support management and, mm. and wreck fishing. Yeah, yeah. Um, what is it, 28 centimetres? The... Yes. Yeah. There's um, there's been some debate, I guess, on the bag and size limits, and that's part of the survey, so we won't give away anything about what your decision is on there, but your opinion on, uh, personal opinion, I'm saying here now, on a, on a size bag slot limit on brim, what do you think? Yeah, take your of, cap off, do this. Yeah, well, one of the, <laughs> no, one of the things we're really looking... The lighting looking... director said don't take your tap on, <laughs> cap off. <laughs> one of the things we're really looking hard at is the idea of a slot limit for black brim in the yep. lakes, you know. So we've seen slot limits, which is where you have a minimum size limit yep. and also a maximum size limit. Yep. So it really protects those big fish. Like a cod. Like a cod. Uh, like, like the dusky flaskies. Like flask 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 <laughs> so um, mm. that's something we're looking really hard at and... We put that question out to the punters and, yeah, we'll, we'll go through and look at the, the feedback and the results on that survey question. Mm. Yeah. You'd like to see it? I like the idea of it, yeah. yeah. You know, mm. Again, it just protects those really big fish, yeah. those mm. breeders. Uh, Where's it falling? Have you had some what, of the survey back? Yeah, what we, it, right? it. what we put yeah. out in the recovery plan was the idea of a 28 centimetre yeah. minimum size. So that's, yep. that's as it is now, no change. Yep. And a maximum of 40 centimetres. Yeah. So you've got that 12 centimetre mm. window. Yep. To catch a fish, still take it home, have a feed, yep. Yep. Uh, but also just add a little bit more protection to those big mm. breeding fish. Yeah. And with yep. good cameras now, you can really take a good photo, put it up on the wall, and that's a trophy, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, one of the things, though, Dale, that you don't like doing in, in the VFA, and history will say that, is having different bag and size limits for different waters in, in the state. Yeah. So one of the things I think that will come out in the feedback is that the people that fish maybe the Maribyrnong or the Yarra or Patterson Lakes... Um, wouldn't want that slot limit for their fishery. That's right, yeah. yeah. So, we, so yeah, we try and keep the, the regulations simple and consistent yep. and not have too many you know, lines yep. on the map. Yeah. But to apply that to other fisheries, you know, even further west, you know, the, yeah. the, the Hopkins and the Glenelg and down at places around yep. Nelson and those places where there's such yep. a great brim fishing, yeah. um, those that stocks protection. are quite different mm. to, yeah. uh, mm. to Gippsland. Yep. All right, I want to talk about um, recreational fishing licence sales. 
Uh, obviously, there was a, a fishing ban back in um, uh, later March and April. So April, by the look of the figures. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll put some, we'll put some numbers You're up correct. in a second. So, um, but we've seen a boom during uh, May, June of, yeah. of fishing. Yeah. And, and I think we've got a bit of info we can put up on the screen now. Um, there's the monthly sales over the last three years. Yes. Pretty looking pretty good. Uh, I mean, look at look at May and June would have been record numbers, wouldn't they? Absolutely, yeah. It's great to see that that spike that happened when you know fishing did open up for a little while. Yeah. And I think we're going to see a, 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 just a booming summer coming along. You'd have to say I, I don't know when the restrictions eased for fishing. I'm not sure of the date, but I don't think October was a full month, was it? For fishing, uh, and yet, heavily restricted. No, fishing right. was open, but and we, we still only had five kilometres. And we still yeah, saw right. yeah. 16, 16,000, so getting close to yeah. you know, very yeah. high numbers with, with a lot of the month. And I think we'll see absolute record numbers of RFL I'd, size. I think I'd we've got agree. a graph yeah. there too of showing the graph there. So you're on the on the trajectory so the, up. The green is, is yeah, this year. This year, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Quite, a, quite a sharp yeah. rise happening there. Yeah, so you yeah. can see the green dip where it's where we've had the, the shutdown and the fishing, and it, and it came the, the lock at the lockdowns exposed. Yeah, uh, the, the high uh, mark there even coming, so it should just average. Yeah, because yeah, on the um, as far as uh, money brought forward to fisheries, that might flatten out and perhaps be a normal year, which would be really really good. Yeah, mm. oh, because you sit on the RFL group, yeah. don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. which get to you know, sort of monitor some of that money and where it's spent. And if yeah. we haven't got the money, yeah. we can't spend it. Yeah, I was astonished to see the f numbers the other day. Mm of how many licenses mm. sold online compared to tackle shops. And it's dead mm. in the tackle shops, isn't it? Yeah, it's been amazing to see that transition, you know, particularly the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, over 90%. Didn't take now. off at first, I don't reckon. No, uh, and we've had to look at those, the, you know, the portals that we've rolled out in the tackle shops. How, we, how can we make yeah. it easy for people and yeah. the tackle shops as well? So, yeah, it's uh, great to see that, you know, because yeah. that really means that your RFL dollar mm. can go so much further. Yeah. And, yeah, just cuts a lot of our yep. costs down and our administration with the yeah. whole system. Yep. Yeah. Dale, out of time, thanks so much for coming in. Really you. appreciate your time. Mm. The hour goes quick, doesn't it? It's been great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, great good. That's thanks. it for Talking Fishing. Hope you enjoyed the show. Next Tuesday, a must-watch show, I think. We've got the new Minister for Fishing and Boating, Melissa Horn, on. If it's not next week, it's the week after. Please come and join us for that. Uh, plenty to talk about with the Minister. And maybe some big announcements very, very close. Uh, until we see you again next Tuesday on Talking Fishing, please stay safe on the water and enjoy your fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. We got all you need, just take a look. Watch those fish jump on your hook. So just relax and take your time. Enjoy the show, then drop us a line. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Talking fishing. Have a good weekend, Mr. Walker. You too, son. <laughs>